Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kung Fu Art. Um, today is the third session of Urban Drawing and Painting. So today we're going to be talking about depth, <clears throat> so foreground, uh, making silhouettes, um, using cubes to uh, draw our spaces, horizontal uh, horizon line, perspective, vanishing point, and vertical depth. Okay, so depth is the apparent distance from front to back or near to far in the artwork. Uh, techniques of perspective are used to create the illusion of depth in paintings or drawings. To achieve the illusion of depth in your sketches, you will need to learn to and practice the fundamentals of perspective, establishing foreground, finding your horizon line, establishing vanishing points, and using techniques of simplification to, and tonal value. Uh, the quality of your sketches will express these techniques to achieve the illusion of depth in your sketches. Foreground is made up of the elements closest to you. Adding elements in the foreground of your sketch will help create that illusion of depth. The elements closest to you will also have the most detail, where elements in the middle ground will be less detailed and elements in the background even more so, sometimes even becoming silhouettes. Making sure to have elements in the foreground, middle ground, and background as is major key to developing depth. Thinking of your sketch as layers in this way can help you find and, and establish your horizon line and build perspective qualities to add to the depth in your sketching. So you can see the girl here in the front, um, she's you know, in the ground here, it's a little bit more in depth and it doesn't look like the sketch is actually completed but you have elements in the foreground, the middle ground here, as well as the background. <clears throat> so simplification. Silhouettes are a great way to simplify elements in your sketches, but also help you to establish depth. Silhouettes can be used to simplify your foreground or obstructed views, right? So obstructed views are often a hindrance to the sketcher. Um, if only those trees weren't there or that car wasn't blocking the view, but making those common annoyances into silhouettes can establish your foreground and also emphasize your subject. Um, you can also establish depth and elements of background by silhouetting bu the buildings or urban furniture that you can see clearly or with much detail. So you can see in the sketch here, the trees are very silhouetted they're not as noticeable as the detail on this building or structure here. So cubes, <clears throat> think in cubes. Drawing buildings can be intimidating when you're out and about in your sketching adventures. Uh, a great way to make drawing buildings less intimidating is just to think of them as cubes or building blocks like Legos. Uh, practice drawing a cube from different angles. The next time you're out sketching, you'll start to see cubes instead of the buildings, um, making it much easier for you to draw the angles and perspective of the buildings in your sketching scene. To measure angles of a building while closing one eye, in order to flatten the image, hold against the subject, so like hold it out, and you can use your thumb to um, and angle it, your pencil or pen, um, to get that angle that you need to represent on the page. Okay, <clears throat> little tricks. Perspective is the <clears throat> perspective is what we're trying to to achieve to create depth. And the term refers to the representation of objects in three dimensional space on the two dimensional surface of a picture. So basic or linear perspective rests on the fact that although pair lines never meet they appear to do so as they get further away from the viewer towards the horizon line, where they disappear, right? The sides of a road, a railway line, are obvious examples. Your takeaway from this is that objects 
the same size look smaller the farther away they are. The horizon line. The horizon line is the point where the earth meets the sky. It's always at eye level. So find the horizon line or your eye level in order to determine the linear perspective when drawing a scene. The horizon line or eye line is how you determine with I'm sorry, how you determine where vanishing points are and how the parallel lines of an object will converge. All right, vanishing points. And this is where perspective gets crazy. <clears throat> Early perspective systems used a single fixed viewpoint with a single vanishing point, right? Later, they started developing multiple vanishing points uh, where, <clears throat> which enabled um, a naturalistic representation of a scene to be made because, you know, the closer to the way we actually see, right? We have two eyes. So technically, we always see at multiple points of view, plus our eyes move back and forth. Vanishing points are where the parallel lines converge and they can be anywhere. Uh, when lines are parallel to the ground, and the ground is flat, they converge at our eye level. But if they are at an angle with relation to the ground, they can converge above or below the horizon line. So here's tips how to do it. You're gonna establish your horizon line first or your eye line, like where is that? So in the diagram, you can see the horizon line is drawn at that level. And you can see it's not where the, the ground is. It's not even where the railing is. It's kind of in between where you're standing, your eye line, okay? Lines parallel to the ground below the horizon line rise up, right? <clears throat> Lines parallel to the ground above the horizon line fall down. Lines not parallel to the ground, such as an inclined roof, uh, will have vanishing points above or below the horizon line. So you can see the roof here has a vanishing point over this way. The stairs has a vanishing point up here. Okay. <laughs> I know it's a little bit difficult, but this is like little tips how to build your vanishing points so that you're getting your angles correct when you're drawing your, your scenes. So then we have vertical depth, which just makes it much more complicated. So vertical depth is three-point perspective. Three-point perspective is used when you want to give the impression of looking up at a subject from a low place or down at something from a high place. So when using three-point perspective, the first two vanishing points will be parallel to the Earth's horizon line. When looking up at an object, the third vanishing point will be above the subject at your eye line. When looking down, the third vanishing point will be below the ground, but still at your eye line. So you're still basing your horizon line off of your eye line, okay? <clears throat> so you can see in the diagram we have the two van we have two finishing points that go down. Your eye line is basically here, and then the vanishing point above. Okay. All right. Tonal value <clears throat> is what atmospheric or aerial perspective is in painting. Okay. Um, it creates the sense of distance in a painting by utilizing the fact that the atmosphere appears bluer in the distance. So you can see in this drawing here, um, everything gets a little bit bluer and less distinct. Um, then this is in black and white here. Drawing shade helps to create a sense of volume and gradation of tone can create the same effects as, as atmospheric perspective. So the things in front are lighter than the things in the background. Atmospheric perspective can be used to in conjunction with linear perspective 
uh, techniques to establish complex depth perception in your mixed media drawings. So here they use shade as well as color atmospheric perspective to create depth as well as the linear lines of the buildings in the street to create that depth. All right, so your assignment is to draw an alley or a narrow street using perspective techniques. You want to establish your horizon line, find the vanishing points, establish the foreground, middle ground, and background, and include urban furniture. A good thing to do is to do a thumbnail sketch of your scene first where you're drawing out where the horizon line is, where your vanishing points are, and where your foreground, middle ground, and background items are. That way, when you do a full sketch, you're not putting those points in, you're just drawing the scene with like a guide, okay? The second assignment is to draw a skyscraper or a tall apartment building from above or below. So if you live in an apartment building or in a really tall house, go to the tallest part and draw something from up there looking down. Or if you live in a tall apartment building, go downstairs and hang out in the park, look up at it and draw it, okay? Establish your horizon line, find your vanishing points, establish your foreground, middle ground, and background, and show the vertical depth and three-point perspective. And then the third one is to draw a skyline. So like a skyline of Norfolk would be beautiful. Establish your horizon line, find your vanishing points, your foreground, middle ground, and background, and include elements of atmospheric or total tonal value to build depth. So that's the key on that one. So we're working on basic perspective, we're working on vertical three-point perspective, and we're working on atmospheric tonal value to build depth in our sketches. So, <clears throat> all right, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, you can contact me, Sarah Taylor Glazer, at nofight.gov to sign up for the live virtual class. Um, we do extra practicing during the live virtual class, so email me. Um, or if you have questions, uh, visit www.silverlibrary.com for more awesome programs like this. Or view this lesson and others on Facebook at art. And, or at sloverlibrary.com under the Learn tab. All right, guys, have fun out there. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.